So I think that it's important that we talk about the uh, the coffee industry, how it used or what it came from, where we came from in the coffee industry, um, and how it is now. And I, we'll do like a kind of a quick sum up of how what we see that is trending now, which is really exciting, and where we came from in the industry. So in '89, when we first entered the market in Seattle, we were based out of Seattle. I saw coffee more as a commodity, or the customers that were buying carts from us because we were manufacturing espresso carts, they were more or less trying to produce a product, mass produce or, or put a cart anywhere they could possibly put it so they can produce this cup of coffee, not really worrying about the super quality aspect to it. It was more like, hey, let's make this cup of coffee. Um, let's make it as fast as we can. Um, there was still some cool hand pulled machines back then which inspired me, but it really wasn't about the quality of the coffee. It was more about this new thing that was so different than the Folgers or the the uh, institutional coffee um, that you'd bite the Minimart or, or drink coffee at home. Um, well, I think people were consuming coffee differently right. then because people didn't go out for coffee. A lot of times people just made coffee at home or they shared coffee experiences at home in groups and people didn't put a lot of importance on it. It wasn't considered specialty. It was considered just simple coffee. It was just basic coffee. It didn't really taste that great and people didn't really care about it as much. It was just kind of like, yeah, this is just what we're, we're just drinking coffee and we don't care. And then it became a thing that turned into almost like a, um, a special thing that you would go out and do or you would order a coffee and then have it as a specialty drink at a restaurant. Right. Or at a cart or if you're on a vacation. Right. So the, the espresso carts that we were making and we were placing these carts or we were selling these these customers are like, yeah, I'm putting a cart here and I'm putting a cart here. Where were they putting them? Yeah, well, and it would crack, this would crack me up. I go, there's no way that Seattle's going to take another espresso cart because every corner's got one. And I say, that guy's not going to make any money. But consider how could you even make a living selling coffee on a corner in the first place? Right. So they're, they're, they're in front of a library. Yep. They're in front of completely obscure locations. They, I mean, they used to go in front of you know, hospitals, yep. they would go in front of grocery stores, they would go in front of like random places where you wouldn't think that you could go there and drink coffee right. on that sidewalk. Well, but you know, what was interesting is that people would line up. So there was this huge demand. People are like, oh my gosh, I've never had espresso. And, and you and I know, and most of us know that an espresso really is a short shot of espresso, is a short shot of coffee, concentrated coffee. And of course, we um, as Americans, we've ruined that by adding a bunch of water and calling it an Americano because we couldn't handle that short, you know, cup of coffee. Little Italy, um, well, I think those places it, loved it. I think it evolved into that. I think at first it started out as shots, right? And people used to appreciate it and say, "Okay, this is a thing. This is a trend. So we're going to drink coffee this way now." Right. But then eventually, people felt like this is a little strong. I I really can't drink it this way. Yeah. What other options are there for me? And so they would fill it with water. They would fill it with milk. They would fill it with syrup. And you would go to these locations and literally see over 25 different oh. kinds of flavoring yep. that you could add to this coffee. So right. we've got, you know, everything from almond to cherry to, you know, whatever Irish cream that you could now put in the coffee, which was now kind of some other kind of drink. Well, the 20, a 24 ounce large, you know, it was like a foam cup, you know, a styrofoam, totally environmentally wrong mm -hmm. cup with 24 ounces of milk. And you've got this much coffee and the rest of it's milk, heated milk and, uh, and, 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 you know, and chocolate and chocolate and everything and else. And sometimes it. though, people would even go beyond that though. And they would throw in like eight shots of espresso right. with the rest of all that flavoring. People that were looking for the caffeine only. Mm -hmm. So, and so here's what's so interesting about that is the, the European manufacturers of espresso machines that we represented. Um, would come over in the early 90s and they would they would really they would laugh and they would crack me up because they, they would always say you guys because you know, we were in Seattle at the time you say Seattle uh, they call themselves the, uh, the espresso capital of the world um, I see you guys as the milk capital of the world you guys put milk in your drinks um, I don't see any espresso being drank here it's all milk and I would chuckle and I was a little embarrassed I'm like yeah you're you're probably right because when they would come we drink these little shots of espresso with with a little bit of sugar which is why I love drinking it now um, as I you know, progress and become more, uh, more into espresso. 
but it uh it cracks me up because we really were the milk capital we weren't really doing a lot of coffee well i think we still are yeah and we still are but i think that there's a still a huge trend of the yeah. me too's right that are still doing that and now it's getting to the point where is it even really a coffee drink well or is it some kind of like yeah. smoothie slash we threw some coffee shots in there to create these other kind of drinks right and there still are those people but the point of having this conversation is to realize that now people have decided whether it's in the food industry uh beer whatever it is people are now saying i don't want to do that anymore right i want to go back to doing things in a simple way i want to understand the the origin of this product from scratch where did this come from and how was it originally consumed and maybe it would be cool to do that again right and that's a, that's where we kind of came up with the idea of let's wood roast if we're going to roast coffee let's wood roast let's stop gas roasting let's just wood roast if we're going to do espresso machines let's stop pushing buttons and and having electronics overwhelm our lives let's stop doing this mass produced food products because i'm not excited about pro overly processed foods to start with um, and here's what I think what's so cool now um, is that, and we saw this, we saw this when we moved from, from, uh, from Seattle to Portland. And I think it was about like 98 is when we moved back to Portland. And we were seeing like in Seattle, it had gone from a dark roast of coffee and it progressively got lighter and lighter. Because um, with dark roast of coffee, most people don't know this, the reason why you can dark roast coffee, you can mask a lot of, of, of off flavors or lower quality coffees or coffees that aren't exciting. You can actually dark roast it and then you, it, you come up with this, this, this you know, obscene flavor of you know, burnt coffee and you can say, oh, I can really taste the coffee. Well, you're really tasting the roast. Um, but we saw a progression get very, very light um, in Seattle. And by 98, when we moved back here, I was really kind of surprised because in Portland it was still, you know, on the dark side. It was not a, um, uh, it's a funny way to say it, but it is really what it was like. It was like the coffee was tend to be a little darker, not super dark, but it was still on the darker side. And uh, so we started seeing, you know, that change within a couple of years. It was very quickly. They seemed like about two years behind um, Seattle back then. Now they're, everybody kind of seems to be neck and neck because I think the information uh, age has helped that. But now we're seeing this extreme version of coffee where they're under roasting it so people are thinking oh if if light roast is good so we can really taste the varietals or taste the coffee and not taste the roast let's go to the other direction of it and let's make it even less you know roasted now we have a problem because now it's grassy um it's sour um you have these other fla other other flavors that i'm like gosh i can't i mean you guys under roasted it but i'm not gonna i usually i'm not very critical i just say okay well that's the style they like or they think they like that um, so you still have to develop the coffee. I think it's important to develop the coffee and there, cause the coffee still needs to be cooked. You can't undercook coffee and think that that's good. So, but I, but I'm, ex I was very excited when people started embracing this light roasted thing. Um, I think about 2004 when it started really taking off the, the under roasted or the light roasted coffee, um, as opposed to the dark in the Portland and, and even well, and Seattle. I think you can, you can actually consume a, a lighter roasted coffee in the form of an espresso shot. Right. Whereas if it's completely filled with so much milk and flavoring, yeah. you really can't taste it. No, you can't. So there is a, there is a function of darker roasted coffee. For, if you're going to make a 24-inch mocha, you probably have to go a little on the darker, maybe medium roast, maybe not super dark, but you're not going to taste the coffee really. It's not going to blast through that all that milk. So there's a function to the darker roasted coffee. But I'll tell you, this is what, when I, I'm, I and I'll tell you, I'm very excited about and we both talk about this. We both get excited because when, when people now call me the millennials or the 30-somethings and the early 40s, um, those people are changing this whole industry. And those are the industry leaders now. It's not the people that are in their 50s and 60s and 70s. Those people have bad habits. I call them bad habits. Um, and they don't change with the times. But what I'm really excited to see now is that people are going towards this slow food movement they're going to slow coffee. Um, our son Devin calls it acoustic coffee, which is even more exciting um, of a word because I think that that's what he, what we're saying is is that we want to see the process. Um, the customer as that walks into a cafe wants to see what they're doing when they do the pour over bars where they're pouring the coffee through a cone. Um, there's a there's a transparency now. Um, there's a show to it, and the barista actually takes their job very very seriously. It isn't like um, a minimum wage job. Like when we were doing it in the beginning, 
um, people were literally hiring minimum wagers and nobody really had pride in their, in their, in their, uh, in their craft. And what's cool now is that people are taking a barista uh, job as seriously as a bartender, as you always say, mm -hmm. um, it's as serious as a bartender. And when you're in Italy or most of Europe, a barista is actually a career. Um, it isn't something that you just do f when you're in college. Um, you do it because it's a, it's a lifestyle. Well, and I think it's important too to realize that people want to add integrity if they're going to bother to do something. They want to have integrity with it. And I think that in itself is a great thing to realize, whether it's growing food and cooking it, right. or brewing your own beer and serving it, whether you want to roast your own coffee and then, you know, serve it. Whatever you're doing, I mean, you can apply it to a lot of different things, but we're seeing it being applied to the coffee business because that's what we do. Right. And so I think it's great to see that. And, and what we realize is that, you know what? Finally, people are taking this seriously. And when you hear someone calling you and saying, we really just want to get one of those machines where you push a button and you can make this coffee as fast as, how many shots can I get in five minutes? Right. That's really all I want to know. Yeah, that's that's right. not exciting. No. Because all that says to me is, is you're just concerned about how many drinks you can turn out and you're not asking even if it's going to taste good or is it going to work and, and is it going to satisfy anybody. Right. They aren't even coffee drinkers a lot of the time. Well, that is the, that's the, the really sad thing is that... They're like, I don't drink coffee, but I do need it to go this fast. Yeah. How many drinks can it make? And when you hear that, it kind of makes you feel like there's not a lot of integrity to this process and you might still sell them a product, but now it, there's no like experience to what you're selling them. Well, it's, and that is the important thing is that the barista is creating an experience. When they make the coffee, they interact with the customer. The customer has an experience watching the barista make the coffee. Well, mm -hmm. I think it's just great to see now that this next generation of person is now embracing that idea of saying, hey, you know what? We're not gonna press the button. Right. We're gonna pour hot water over a cone. You're gonna have to wait a minute for this to work. That and is, when you yep. drink it, yep. I care how it tastes. Right, and, and not be afraid to remake something if it's mm -hmm. not if it's not right, if it's not right. perfectly and right. And the person that's buying it is appreciating that integrity themselves, and that's why they'll go back and buy it again. Well, and that's why I think that we, like, we embrace it so much because we've always felt that that was important. Um, and so it's just like taking a long time, but now people are kind of coming full circle, looking back to the old ways of making coffee. How was coffee roasted? It was roasted with wood. Um, how, was, how was espresso made? It wasn't pushing a button. Uh, when people say pull a shot, they say pull me a shot and they're pressing a button. I'm going, man, you don't even know what pull a shot means. Mm -hmm. What does a pull a shot mean? And they go, well, I don't know. Push right, and you don't add a lot of additives, you don't fill it full of milk, no. you don't put syrup, you don't add a lot of those things. And I think that now you're coming back to an original, simple way of a product. I would love, it would be my dream to walk into a cafe and they don't have any syrup, they have sugar, <laughs> and they have espresso, and they have milk, and they have one size cup, and it's only served in ceramic. Um, that would be my dream, but I know that's probably unrealistic, but that's but that would be my dream is that well, people care. Well, I don't care. know that it's that unrealistic because yeah. I think a lot of the people that you talk to now are getting excited about those same ideas and they're talking about it and they're saying, we see this idea, we like this concept. Right. And of course, you and I have always been enthusiasts for that concept. So we're just like, yeah, we agree with you. We will you know, go out there and do it. Right. And we'll support it. We'll totally support it.